Hello to all of you watching us around the world today. Thank you for stopping by another episode of SGS Live. My name is Fulvia Martinez for SGS Communications, currently coming to you from Houston, Texas. Today, we got a really special topic for you. Uh, during the next 30 minutes, we will talk about why sustainability is such a hot topic, why it's so crucial for businesses today, why it is also so important for us here at SGS and how a big part of our own goals and ambitions involves helping you in your own sustainability journey. To help me do this, joining me today is my colleague, Paula Ordonez, the Global Head of Corporate Sustainability for SGS, and someone who I personally know is a big champion and very passionate about this topic. Paula, how are you? Well, it's great having you with us. Thank you so much for uh, accepting the invitation. So, Paula, let's start with getting to know you a little bit better. I know I mentioned that you are extremely passionate about this, and I just want to know, how does that passion about sustainability and the environment translate to your role at SGS? So, um, yeah, I've been, I've been almost all my life dedicated to this. I, I studied environmental science, and I'm very, very attached and uh, to, to the topic and I started in SGS in 2015 uh, as a reporting manager and now I, I currently uh, stand for the global head of corporate sustainability and I oversee the, the sustainability strategy for the group internally uh, trying to make uh, our, our operations uh, more sustainable, our supply chain practices as well. So great background. Uh, just want to know why is sustainability so important nowadays? How, how did it become so important? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question, Fulvio. And uh, I would say that uh, sustainability has become uh, very, very important uh, lately, mainly for, for three main points. Um, I would say the first two ones are social and regulatory requirements or, dem or demands. Uh, and the reason for this is that we are, we are living in a very complex world. Uh, uh, where the mega trends are constantly shaping the consumers and the companies' uh, behaviors. Um, companies of all sizes all over the place, they face growing demands on regulatory requirements for climate change, natural resources management, uh, health and wellness, responsible ways of production, so this is shaping the, the, the sustainability agenda, but also, and I know that we need to look forward and move away from the pandemics, but the pandemics has uh, become very critical for sustainability because pandemics has created an even greater differentiation in, in, in the society. So the social stages are even more different and uh, society in general is looking at governments and organizations to, to to, to work together to, to find a solution, you know, to this social problem that is that is uh, has been created or exacerbated, let's say, with the pandemics. And the third topic that I will mention is the, that companies nowadays are seeing sustainability kind of like a survival kit uh, on times of crisis. And this is because sustainability uh, has been proved and tested during these pandemics and uh, has uh, successfully uh, seen as viable, okay? Uh, for example, last year in 2020, um, the sustainability investments have uh, grew uh, massively, okay? Even registered records. And this was only explained because of the prof profitability of the funds. Um, uh, these uh, sustainability funds were much more uh, resilient to, to market disruptions. That's great. Thank you for, for sharing that. You you mentioned mega trends. You mentioned uh, some of the things that we know at SGS and that are shaping sort of our own vision and ambitions of what sustainability is all about. Let's talk about SGS for a moment. SGS is considered a sustainability leader in the tech industry, the testing inspection certification industry. What has made us uh, a leader in terms of sustainability? Mm -hmm. So sustainability at SGS is something that uh, has been created quite long time ago. So uh, sustainability in SGS uh, has a long journey. Huh? But what I would say is that now we are we are a purpose driven company. Um, that means uh, that we have defined a purpose for the organization. Um, I think it was defined back in 2018. And the purpose of SGS is 
to enable a better, safer, and more interconnected world. So this places sustainability at core of what we do. Um, sustainability is embedded in our culture, or you know, we are working towards this culture of sustainability in every individual in the organization, and is part of uh, one of our six business principles. Um, the sustainability program is overseen by the operating council and the board of directors. So that means that it's a very top level of the organization. And for example, uh, recently we have set um, in the long term incentive of our management three KPIs that are linked to sustainability performance. Um, we have been uh, sustainability leaders for seven years already in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And last year, for example, uh, we have named uh, something that I'm very proud of. Uh, we have uh, awarded with the best uh, integrated report uh, in the region of, uh, of, uh, of Europe, um, thanks to the integration of non-financial information in our annual accounts. And we are doing this uh, because we believe in it, but we believe that in order to deliver superior results to and sustainability services to our clients, we need to lead by example. And being sustainability leaders ourselves is the best credentials that we can we can bring to our clients. So you mentioned three KPIs specifically, and uh, in, I'm looking at right now our Sustainability Ambit Ambitions 2030 document that is readily available online, www.sgs.com. For those of you who want to go in and find it, easily found on our homepage. I'm seeing that our, our, our pillars for this ambition, Sustainability Ambition 2030, deal with a, delivering a better planet, better society, better governance. Now, since we, we launched this cor corporate sustainability strategy recently, could you describe uh, what the strategy is about and some of the main features? Yeah, <clears throat> sure. Uh, and, and thank you so much for, for uh, reading the strategy, Fulvio. It's great to see that. that hey, you're I, I got to do, do my homework, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk about no, this it's, a, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. And yeah, you are completely right. It's based in three, three pillars, better governance, better uh, planet and better society. Uh, and uh, it's a very, I would say, uh, cutting edge sustainability strategy. Um, and I will mention two or three points uh, on why I think that this is the case. And the first thing is that this strategy includes long term 2030 ambitions, but it's also complemented with uh, long term, uh, short term 2023 targets. OK, so. Um, um, these long-term ambitions that are 2020, uh, 2030, uh, serve as, as uh, a guiding uh, guiding star, no? like the North Star, where we want to go. Uh, but these uh, short-term targets that, by the way, are aligned with our business strategy, and that is very important, help us to measure progress uh, towards those long-term ambitions. And this is very important because sustainability strategies need to be long-term, okay? but they need to be resilient enough to adapt themselves to market fluctuations, material topic changes, or different stakeholders' expectations. And, and that's, that's what you were talking about just a moment ago about how the pandemic has also shaped our sustainabilities and has almost done a stress test, right? On exactly. uh, you know how resilient the, the, the organization has been uh, in terms of holding true to those ambitions, to those ob objectives, even even during the you know the worst of situations. Exactly, exactly, and uh, I, we have experienced yes a, a, a switch uh, completely in the market, and companies had to react very, very, very fast. So that's why the strategies need to be resilient. Another point that I like very much from our strategy is that it's not only including targets from our own operations, the way that we do business, but we also include targets on our supply chain and on our services. So we have set targets uh, for requirements that we will request to our suppliers to work with us, yes, for example. And we have also set targets for our sustainability solutions. So we want to, to improve and to increase the number of sustainability services that we provide because we really want to add value to society beyond our borders. And finally, and super quick, um, I could talk for hours on this, <laughs> is that this strategy has been prepared uh, in collaboration with every function 
and department of the organization. And this is very important, okay, because it's really embedded. Um, corporate sustainability at this just really acts only as a catalyst for change. But then the success of sustainability is thanks to the predisposition and willingness of the different departments to embrace sustainability practices in their day to day to day, day to day sorry and I, and I would even say that embrace is even not a strong enough word to say what's happening to describe what's happening at SGS because it's really a cultural transformation right yeah we eat we breathe uh we live sustainability now at this at this organization and it comes up it's a topic that now doesn't come come up just randomly it comes up on in every single conversation and meeting we're having uh, at, at every level of the of the organization. So we've been talking about sustainability so far and our ambition strategy from you know a, a very high level sort of point of view. Can you provide us with some specific impact that, that uh, the strategy has already had um, in terms of uh, you know real life examples, Paula? Mm -hmm. Um well, um, I, I, well, I could talk about many, but uh, I was, uh, and, and when I was thinking about uh, what I would like to, to say today, um, and coming back to the to the discomfort of society and the, the big differences that we are happening, I would really like to, to showcase one project that we are working at uh, that is for the uh, better society, uh, and it's uh, our project SGS Academy for the Community. And it's something that I really like to showcase because it's a pro bono initiative that um, that we donate through our SGS Academy, which is for those ones that are not familiarized with it, is uh, our uh, training services to clients. We train uh, our clients on technical expertise uh, through SGS Academy. So we are using SGS Academy network to train people uh, with low income resources. So we are providing by free technical training to these people so they can increase their employability. And uh, we are training uh, them on some topics that probably they will not have uh, paid for them. Um, and uh, we are doing this uh, in different affiliates in different countries that we work at, like South Africa, India, Chile, or Taiwan. And we have uh, already in two years uh, trained more than 250 people um, uh, across the world. It's amazing. That's amazing. And, and talking about across the world, I just want to acknowledge right now our wonderful audience uh, from also across the world. Say hello to people from Tanzania, India, Argentina, Bangladesh, Peru. If you want to talk about taking this topic of sustainability international, we're doing it right now with, with this audience that we have. Thank you so much for being with us again. Um, we've been talking a lot about ourselves <laughs> so far. <Yeah. laughs> so let's talk a little bit about, because I did mention in our introduction, look, this is this sustainability uh, ambitions are, are not just for us. They're also going to have ripple effects with our clients, right? With our customers. So let's talk a, a, a moment on how SGS is going to support other companies, um, other clients, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, organizations across the world in their sustainability journeys as well. Sure. So. As mentioned before, in, in when I was explaining about our strategy, as yes, uh, wants to create and to add value beyond our borders, and and the reality is that the best way that we can do that is through our sustainability solutions. Okay, so our sustainability solutions are a wide range of services um, that helps organization uh, in their sustainability journeys. Um, and we are just aiming to, to help them implement better and more efficient processes and procedures and, and to address their own uh, stakeholders' concerns. So who are the solutions relevant for? What type of customers do we work with? Who's, who's the perfect candidate for, uh, for, uh, for them to work with us in terms of uh, uh, figuring out sustainability and their journey? Uh, towards being more sustainable? Um, so it's a good question, Fulvio, because um, if, if you look at the portfolio of our clients, it's really big. I mean, uh, yeah. I would say that uh, any company that really wants to start or wants to 
continue the journey on, on sustainability, it's a potential client of us. Um, our sustainability solutions will help those ones that are starting the sustainability journey that is more focused normally on regulatory requirements. But we will also be able to provide uh, with more, let's say, complex approach to sustainability in more mature organizations. Um, and they, these solutions are based on our uh, expertise over the years because SGS yes, has been provided providing sustainability services for many, many years already, and uh, also our broad experience across the world. So whether you're a big company with already a well-established sustainability um, ambitions yourself um, or well underway in your own journey, or whether you're a, mi a mid-sized company or a small company, uh, what you're saying is the solutions um, uh, and, and what we have to provide uh, in terms of sustainability um, can fit just about any organization of any type and of any size. So that's that's great to know. Now, would you be able to provide us with um, uh, specific examples of how we've helped maybe already some clients in their journey towards being more sustainable? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I can I can name uh, some some good uh, examples of services that we currently classify as sustainable solutions. So. For example, uh, let's talk about our green green buildings. Um, our um, energy management services uh, help our clients to to analyze uh, the, the energy consumption that they have, uh, and so they are saving money, obviously, because they will spend less money in the in the electricity bill. But as well, they they will they will uh, reduce their their greenhouse gas emissions in the organization or. Uh, precision farming services, um, um, sustainable, sustainability in agriculture is, is a very hot topic and increasing in, in importance and the industry is very impacted by, by the, the rising of cost and, and, and um, farmers are, are forced to find ways, you know, to optimize and maximize the productivity. So, for example, our precision farming services uh, in concrete, um, or in, in particular, the, the statistical analysis, um, help farmers to optimize the, the level of fertilizer that they are putting into their crops. So they are not only saving money, which is the case, but they are also uh, avoiding a lot of uh, water pollution and eutrophification. Sorry, that's a very hard big word, word. Big word, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, fugitive emissions to, to the atmosphere. Um, but we also serve uh, uh, consulting services, okay? Um, um, we, we provide a assurance of uh, uh, sustainability data, assurance of sustainability reports. We do the due diligence in sustainability or a risk evaluation through our ESG services and solutions. So um, we want we do want to we're about 18 minutes in the conversation already. And like you said, um, I have to be uh, definitely conscious of the time because you're very passionate about the topic. We could we could go we could go on and on and on about this. Right. Let me ask you a couple more questions and then we do want to leave some time at the end for a couple of questions. So if you're watching us, please put your questions below in the comments and we, we will get to as many as we can in the time we have. Um, so what what are the most important, uh, you know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think uh, about the client that is either watching us right now or the potential client that's watching us right now. Uh, what are the most important sustainability topics that a company or organization should address right now at the moment? Because I think sustainability is a very broad term, and sometimes people have a hard time sort of, you know, nailing down what, what exactly it is. Is it just recycling? Is it like, what is it exactly, right, that a company should be addressing? Yeah, that's a very good question, uh, Fulvio. Um, and I will say that all sustainability dimensions are very important depending on the type of company and uh, the type of material topics that they are affected with. Okay, so, uh, but I will say in, in broader terms, I would say that in the short term, social social aspects are surging due to the to the pandemics, especially those ones related uh, uh, on fighting inequalities and and uh, people well being. 
um, uh, and then environmental issues uh, are known and remark uh, being remarkably uh, important, but more in the medium term. And something else that is uh, getting a lot of, of attention is uh, is uh, diversity governance, no? Diversity at at board levels and and uh, in executive management, uh, and as well how companies are integrating sustainability in the in the way that they do business okay it's not about any more about greenwashing or doing actions here and there but creating the culture of sustainability and uh, embedding it in the decision making let me go to a question from somebody online right now and then i'll come back to my very last question to wrap things up for us um so this question comes from dirk horst uh his question says uh, good day, everyone. Good day to you, sir. Please, will you clarify what type of authority does SGS have concerning companies should comply with regulations? Okay, so, um, I mean, SGS, what helps clients is to uh, adapt to those regulations. Okay? So if they, they um, I don't know, let's take um, an organization, a manufacturing company that needs to put effluents into the into the into the river, they need to comply with certain limits of, of pollution. So SGS is helping the client on testing that water and making sure that the effluent is thrown uh, with uh, the safe and quality levels. I'm not sure if I responded the question. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, uh, we can do as good of a job as we can in the time we have a lot of right now, but certainly anybody that has a question um, that we're, we're unfortunately not going to get to all of them, please uh, contact us directly. SGS.com is our website and, and you can get in touch with uh, folks such as Paula and her team and from uh, our divisions that can help you with your questions around sustainability, no matter in what industry you're coming from. So let me go now to, um, to my last question for you, Paula. Um, and that question is, is somewhat... Uh, uh, um, uh, I want you to imagine that we get into a time machine and we can travel to the year 2030. What would SGS look like then? <laughs> That's a very good question. Huh? Um, well, I would say, I mean, uh, the, the normal answer that everybody will give is that continue being uh, sustainability leaders, you know, and and uh, walking the, the the journey of sustainability and, and and maintaining that leadership, which is something that is it's difficult. I mean, because sustainability is not is not a destination; it's a journey, uh, and it's always moving. Uh, so it's all, always requires a step beyond. Um, then we would really like to 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 be able to claim uh, relevant and significant uh, contributions to the sustainable development goals, but. For me, honestly, what I would really like to, to see uh, in 2030 is that SGS has helped to transform the world into a more sustainable one through all the solutions that we can provide to our clients. And for me, I mean, uh, we behave as a sustainable company and we are a sustainable company, but helping others to achieve this is something really big that uh, we have in our hands. And for me, I will feel really, really proud to, to, to look back and say, hey, you know, look how many companies we have helped and we have uh, contributed through them to, to create a better, a better place. Huh? Let, me, let me just add one more sort of uh, perspective to that very same question. Uh, what does Paula Ordonez look like in 2030 in terms of sustainability? What sort of things? Uh, because I think it's interesting to uh, contrast what a big organization can do, uh, but also what can you do at home? What sort of things do you think Paula Ordonez will be doing in 2030 that have been influenced by all this information that you've come to learn about sustainability? <laughs> uh, I mean, in my, my personal life or professionally? In your personal life. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm always, uh, always working. Uh, I have a little one of five, uh, and she, she's very like, like mini me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm really trying to, to make her understand what is the, the relevance of, of sustainability and, uh, and, um, and teaching her, you know, that she needs to take care, not only for the planet that is important, but also for people, people, it's very important, and uh, I would really like that uh, she she's able to to 
to live in a better and more equal world. And uh, that I believe that is thanks to to people working in sustainability across the planet. It's not me individually, but uh, that will will you know move uh, governments and will move corporations into that uh, to transform that let's say dream into a reality. Hopefully, purpose driven uh life is uh is is i think what you're trying to say and definitely knowledge is power because i do the same thing with my children um i have four boys that i also stress um <laughs> you know the the need to uh to uh to really adopt these values into their lives right and live them live them not just know about them but live them i have one more question online before we wrap up that i'd like to share with you um and the question is what is the advantage of an SGS certification over the certification of another company? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I mean, uh, that's a very good question and a very tricky one, huh, Fulvio. Uh, yeah. A, a certification of SGS, uh, I mean, it's a certification like uh, like like others, but you know, uh, hiring as yes, you make sure that uh, your service is provided in a trustable way, that uh, every single employee believes and lives integrity in, in the way that we that we provide our services. And uh, that as well, the, the service as such is it's sustainable because we are a sustainable company, okay? We make sure that our supply chain uh, complies with uh, with certain uh, uh, regulatory <laughs> levels, okay, um, and so on. So um, it's about hiring a partner that shares your own uh, principles. Um, and for sure, for for us, uh, we sell trust, and uh, and and SGS is a very trustable partner. I don't know fully if you want to add something. No, I, you know, I think you're you articulated that well. You know, we are <laughs> we're a company that's that's diverse. We're a global network. Uh, we're a company that not just believes in this, but but is striving to live it in uh, you know in every sense of the word. Um, so I think uh, you know behind that certification um, comes a trusted, knowledgeable partnership, as you said, uh, Paula. I think that's a very, very way to put, very good way to put it. Um, so at at, uh, at this time we um, we're, we're, we want to wrap up now. Uh, there there really has been a tremendous amount of information covered today, uh, Paula. You're extremely knowledgeable. I'm sure everyone watching today really mm -hmm. appreciates that you've given us a little window into into that knowledge and experience that you bring. Um, if you wish to learn more about our sustainability ambitions 2030, like I said, please feel free to comment below. Even after the live event is over, you're welcome to leave us your questions. Uh, your co if you want to be contacted, you can do so as well and acknowledge it there. And uh, I know our social media team right now is 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 reviewing that, and we'll be getting back to people as soon as possible. So please use the comment below, or you could also visit us at sgs.com, which is uh, another great source of information about our ambition, sustainable ambitious 2030. Paula, it's been a pleasure. Thank you again for joining me today. A pleasure to me and thank you and uh, stay safe, all of you. And to all of you around the world, stay safe. Until next time. Bye.